Apple stock has had an extraordinary run over the last decade. All indications are this quarter should be good, but what's the company and the stock going to do over the long term? Gene, fast forward five years. Where do you think this company can be? Well, the next five years are very exciting for Apple. And the reason is if you actually look back the last 30 years, there's been three major shifts in computing, and that gone from the mainframe to the PC to the laptop. This decade is going to be the decade of mobile, and that's really what Apple's going to, that will be right in their wheelhouse, not only with the iPhone, but then the tablet, but also portable Macs. And as you go more mobile and just believe in that shift, a fundamental shift in computing behavior, as you go more mobile, the ability to connect in these devices talking to one another becomes increasingly important. That's really the secret sauce that Apple has that gets exciting. So I think that uh, to look at from the perspective of the shift to mobile and second is the, the reality that having these devices talk with each other better, and Apple does a great job of that, is going to be a competitive advantage. And they have a huge early lead there. Obviously, they completely revolutionized the business when they came out with the iPhone. Now, that said, this is a company that's been growing an extraordinary rate for years, 30% a year for a company its size. It's now $30 billion, $35 billion mm -hmm. in overall revenue. Lots of companies, when they get to that size, they start to slow down, become big, dumpy companies like IBM did a long time ago, and it's now doing fine, but it's much larger. Do you think Apple can sustain the kind of growth rates that we've seen? I think they can, and the, the fundamental reason is this. I think a lot of people who um, are more in the uh, kind of the cutting edge don't realize this, but but a lot of people's lives still aren't standardized on a computer, and eventually they will be. And a lot of people aren't that sophisticated as they kind of move into this mobile computer generation. And that's really Apple's sweet spot. One of the things that amazes me is when we do our work and sit outside Apple stores and actually count people and we look at just who's actually buying these computers, Apple right now, the people that walk out with Macs, they're high income people. But yet the audience that goes into a Mac store is a very broad audience. You look at 70% of the people are more middle income people that want these products but just can't quite afford them. My point is this, as you look over the next few years, people want to buy these Mac products. It's only 4% global market share. And as you start to see Apple in the mobile world start to shift their price points down, there's an explosive growth opportunity as this, this audience that's just this, that's dying to have some of these products finally gets them to a price point that's achievable. And, and do you think globally, obviously one thing Microsoft had in the last wave was that everybody wanted to standardize around the product because it made it so much more convenient and all the software providers did the same thing. Will Apple have that in mobile globally in a couple of years where there's just such an advantage to being on their platform? Exactly. We're seeing that already with the iPhone. You look at that in the app developers, the, the discrepancy between iPhone apps versus Android apps. You see that the development platform is definitely favoring Apple. And then I think if you think about what people are using their computers for, and this is beyond just the software that, that they use, it's pictures, it's media, it's being able for these devices to talk to one another. No one does it like Apple. When's the last time you're able to have a, 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 an Android phone talk to a, a PC? It's very difficult. And obviously, Apple's figured that out. So the, I think the connectivity of these devices over the next several years is going to be just a huge win for Apple. And then on the computer side, one of the opportunities that just seems huge to me is Apple and Macs, they have something like 8% share of the market. One thing the internet has done is freed you from Windows, basically, and opened up this market. This company, our company, would not be on Macs if we all had to be on Excel, the same way we used to be. Now we can be free, because most of what we do is on the internet. Do you think Apple will ever start making real inroads in the corporate market with PCs? Corporate's going to be a tough market. I don't think it's going to happen in the next five years. I think you're going to see definitely more mainstream adoption from kind of from an upper income to more of a middle income kind of a bracket. But I think the corporate market's really a tough uh, nut to crack. Businesses 50 persons and smaller, that's a very achievable because they basically run themselves. The need for IT support's much less for a Mac. But unfortunately, old uh, corporate America is going to be probably stuck uh, in the PC days for the, for the next uh, decade. So I am the guy who's known for these crazy hyperbolic price targets and things like that. I don't want to wreck your reputation by putting you on the spot there, but assuming it continues to grow at the rates that we've seen and the mobile world takes off the way that you've said and there is this big global network effect uh, built, do you think it's reasonable this stock can go up 5x from where it is now? Well, I, I don't want to put a, a five-year price target out there, but I can say this. This company is better positioned than any other hardware company to grow over the next five years, not only because their products work, but also the end markets that they're targeting are the fastest growth end markets. So I can tell you that ultimately that's going to mean numbers are going higher and going to continue their strong growth rates. 
And uh, I would love to go and put a, a big price target out there, but uh, I think if you can read Don't. between the lines, yes, absolutely. it's going higher. And then last question is, uh, the company obviously when Steve got sick, again, everybody got tremendously worried about the loss of leadership. It did extraordinarily well in that period. Does Steve transition? Is Apple now fine on its own without Steve? Or well, hopefully he'll be around for a long time, but is that something that people should be worried about? I don't think people should be worried about it. Steve Jobs is an irreplaceable visionary. He's uh, as big of a CEO since Henry Ford. I think that there's, he's, he's clearly on that level. And I think that ultimately is that the company can run just fine on, a, on an operational basis uh, without him. But there is an intangible factor to having Steve Jobs as part of your vision that I don't think uh, anyone can replace. And the good news is he's been a lot better, and we're hoping for more exciting products, hopefully this month, that to, to see from him. It'd be very exciting. It's great to see it again. Thank you again, G. Thank you.